be or do the same things I did last time, the firing line. I'm going to just throw some names out you uh, out at you. Uh, you tell me if you like them, if you don't like them, if you've got a funny story, just you wedge it in there, whatever you want. But I will... Uh, oh, here we go. I just got a message saying 15 countdown. So that's absolutely perfect. Uh, so uh, <laughs> the first right. one is Bob Holly. Uh, I never had no bad dealings with him. It wasn't his call uh, to, to break my arm. He's doing what he's told. You know, mm. he, He's a uh, cool guy. I liked him. Yeah. Did you actually wrestle in one-on-one? Yeah. No, not one-on-one in tag match. Tag match in the Battle Royal one time. Yeah. Uh, next one is Nova. Supernova, he's cool. I like him. He, he was a good student. He had some good original moves. He just didn't get over with them. Everybody stole them from him. No. Um, so he didn't get over them. Is it? Uh, why do you think so? Is it just like a size thing or comedy? I, I don't know. He, he's doing moves that, that they still can't do today. He was doing them. And uh, uh, I don't know. Sometimes even the best don't get over it. Just because you're the best don't mean that people are going to like you. Yeah, the, I'm not maybe, saying he was the best, but even though if you were, you know. yeah. Uh, next one is, and I always love to hear a story about Robert Fuller. <laughs> Tennessee stud. Yeah, <laughs> you got a big old dick. <laughs> <laughs> is this the kind of thing that he was getting out on a regular basis to show everybody? Yeah, that's like uh, Lawler was. The same. <laughs> Jerry Lawler was the same way. When they got to the hotel, they stripped naked. Ric Flair, they stripped naked, run up and down the hallways. And uh, uh, Robert Fuller did that when he got to the arenas too. You know, as soon as they get to the arena, they take their clothes off and sit in the dressing room. Why? Did they keep the shoes on? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Flair got drunk and run up and down the hallways all the time. You know, playing with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's so odd as well. With, I, Robert, with Robert Fuller, I hear that you know he just. He always called it like smoking scripture or reading scripture instead of like a euphemism for smoking weed. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I only wrestled him. I didn't hang out with him. You know, no. I passed him in the dressing room, but I didn't, I didn't hang out with him, so I couldn't say. Yeah, was he ever your booker? Uh, did he ever... Was he a booker no. in the WrestleMania? No. Uh, well, he, he was, but not when I was there. We, when we were there together, he was working just like I was. My first program was with me and this guy, Judge Dredd, against uh, Jeff Jarrett and Robert Fuller for yeah. the first few weeks. Uh, next one is Spike Dudley. Oh, Spike's great. He's one of the best. He always struck me as someone who was really game to do anything. Yeah, the only thing I disagree with Spike was he wasn't in the training. He wasn't in the working out. And so I, I just, you know, uh, I'm not a big bodybuilding fan, but I am when it comes to, you know, looking the part. Uh, and for me, Spike didn't really look the part, but he was very good. He wasn't into getting liked- taller either. No, he's a little guy. <laughs> I say, even if you're small, little, you still should have muscles. Mm. Yeah, always get a tan, always hit the gym, sort of be the best you, even if you're small. Well, the thing is, my uncle taught me, he said, when the guy in the front row is in better shape than you, you're not going to make any money. That's absolutely fine. That's a fine piece of advice. I agree with it. Yeah, absolutely. It. Yeah, if you're turning up looking like the fans, you know, you, you turn up in a suit, turn you know, star in some way or fashion. Uh, next one is like, Ale- it, oh, sorry. Like it's good to have a wrestler who's one of the people, but they all can't be one of the people, you know. Yeah, Electra. Electra, uh, she's a very nice girl. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I haven't dealt with it that much. She's she's pretty cool. Gary Albright, very cool. He was a. He, they called him Jekyll and Hyde because when he got drunk, uh, he turned to Doctor Jekyll. <laughs> I, Hyde, Hyde, Hyde. He turned into Hyde. Yeah, what well, he turned nice. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, t- talk to me a bit more about Gary Albright. I really don't know much about this guy. I know he's huge. Uh, you know, he's a big star in Japan. He was from the University of Nebraska or Nebraska State wrestling team, and he was a uh, you know uh, a Big Ten champion and uh, national champion and a great amateur wrestler, and uh, he was a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you never had an easy match with him then? No. Well, I never wrestled him. He's like my partner, so I I was saved from that. But uh, I had guys in there saying, does he have to throw me on my head? I go, does he throw you on your head? He goes, yeah. I go, well, I guess he has to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one is Mr. Curtis Hughes. Mr. Hughes, he's cool. I was with him the other day, or this morning, actually. Uh, we go way back. Mm. Yeah, I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago, in fact, and uh, he was he really surprised me. He was full of personality. I, I wasn't sure what I was going to get, but yeah, he was loads of fun. Bubbly. Yeah, he's a bubbly character. Uh, the Pitbulls. Uh, well, one died. Anthony died, and uh, me and Gary are like one of the best friends. 
Mm. Uh, I've interviewed Gary. Uh, he'll say this as well, but you can confirm. Are they the guys who could get you anything? Would be Gary, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did get us anything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. What, what was his involvement away from wrestling? Was that like a full-time sideline for him? No, I think he worked at the nightclubs as a bouncer also, and then uh, his side job was uh, getting stuff for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Lucrative, <laughs> I imagine. Uh, next one is Jimmy Snooker. Uh, he's one of my idols. My uncle, when I first started wrestling, he said, pattern yourself after three great workers. You know, so my, one great worker is the Sheik, the next one was Tiger Mask, and the third one was Jimmy Snooker. Those three together, when I patterned myself, that's what I make the style of Sabu, in my mind. Yeah, uh, so specifically the high flying, but uh, what else did you take from Snooker? And good shape, Snooker. Mm. He had a great body. That's, what, that's why I, that's, that was a, he was a good example for me to lead. Did you uh, wrestle him oh, in? Good example for me to follow. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe in the ring. Uh, <laughs> with, uh, with Jimmy in Eastern, how was he to deal with? Did you ever wrestle him in the Eastern Championship? No, I, I wrestled him in. Uh, in New York one time for another company years later. But uh, uh, no, we, we talked a little bit, but he, he was kind of spaced out. And, and I didn't know him before he was spaced out. So it wasn't like we, you know, I only seen him on TV and I, and I admired him. I, I, didn't, I didn't hang out with him. Yeah, well, I do a, a weekly show with Don Morocco and he's told me so many Jimmy Snooker stories over the years. I don't suppose you would have met Don, would you? He, did he leave before you arrived? I, well, no, I met him in Hawaii one time, but, but not in ECW. No, okay, because uh, I know he was a former champion, but I think he just ended up leaving before you turned up. Uh, Ian Rotten. I Ian Rotten, the other Rotten Ian brother. Rotten. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. He doesn't get the respect he deserves. Uh, he's been running for like 15 years, and nobody gives a shit. Well, uh, specifically, because um, when you type in Ian Rotten's name searching, you don't hear the best of things usually, but if, as a friend, <laughs> t tell me tell me some of the nice things he's done. Um, he he never got me a hotel. I always stayed at his house, and it always tricked me. You know? it, <laughs> they, I'm gonna stop by my house and get something to eat. Then I'll take the hotel, then never take me. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy. He's one of my good friends. He's got heat with people, but not with me. Okay, I was going to say that's that's the nicest thing. He he didn't buy you a hotel room. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> Rob Black. Rob Black. Yeah. The. Uh, XBW bus. Uh, uh, I don't know. I talked to him lately. I'm friends with him now, but I wasn't for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. The first time I said Rob Black, and immediately a smile turns up. Is he just? <laughs> what well, was he know, into? He was, the porn, he was the porn guy. <laughs> he was the porn guy. Got a year and a day in prison or something, didn't he, for obscenity? Yes. Uh, yes. Something. Something like that. I think. Um, well, he, yeah. When you. Cross state lines of porn, you, there's some rules apply, and he didn't care. No. With uh, the next, this next one, Louis Spicoli. Best friend in the world. I loved him. Yeah, I don't hear too much about Louis, and everybody who's met him says he was great. Talk about Louis a bit. Yeah, he, he was a great worker, and he had a great memory, but he was kind of, he, he rubbed people the wrong way. Like, uh, with, if somebody was reading something, he read, he'd look over their shoulder and piss, piss them off. But he did that with everybody, and, and he didn't care. He didn't even notice he was pissing them off. <laughs> but uh, I, he hung out with me. He rode in my motorhome. Me, me uh, Louis Piccoli, Van Damme, Fonzie, my referee, uh, we rode in my motorhome. It was us five, you know, jamming. <laughs> jamming, having a good time. Uh, was Louis, did he have the potential to be a real superstar? Yes. He had it. Um, he, he, he had it except for, you know, the pills got the best of him. He, he had it. Yeah. Uh, Gangrel, Vampire Warrior. Uh, I love the gimmick. I love his look. Uh, and I like him. Beulah McGillicutty. Um, uh, not, I, I don't have much deals with it. I said hello, goodbye. I, I don't really have no good or bad nothing yeah um of, of the women who are in ecw we're, and i'm not saying the closest wink wink i'm saying who, <laughs> who are the ones who you're you know more friends with in the ecw locker room hyatt uh, missy hyatt something no no well i wasn't that close with any of them because i my wife was always close by I i'd see. only say hello in passing and stuff I, I didn't really go out of my way now francine was different she was a she was one of the boys you said hello to her like you would to hulk hogan 
you know, it didn't matter that she was one because in that in those times there weren't many weren't, weren't many girl women wrestlers, and she wasn't considered a woman wrestler. Mm. She was one of the boys, in a sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rhino. Uh, definitely one of the boys. He's one of the guys that helped start. Yeah. Oh, did you really? You you mean you trained him or? I, I trained. Yeah, Scott Moore started him, uh, but I helped break him in. Uh, taught him more and taught him how to be a Rhino. Yeah, I I know that uh, I I know that you did a WWF tryout in '93, but uh, Rhino did as well, like '95, '96 time. Was he? Because he he struck me as someone Vince would have loved. You know, huge legs and everything. Was he just too young at the time? He was too young at the time. He thought he was going to wrestle sort of like me, doing backflips and big bumps. And then uh, when I seen him doing that, I told him not to do that to wrestle like an animal. And then that's when he got noticed. But that was way after his tryout. But my tryout was in '94. Yeah, okay. Uh, right, we've got one minute left, so I'll uh, ask two more then. Uh, Ron Simmons. Um, great guy. Uh, I like him, love him. Okay. Uh, Big Dick Dudley. Oh, he was a good guy. He, he'd die for you. Yeah. He, he was the bouncer of our dressing room. Well, uh, yeah, I've heard this. I've heard that he was like a proper badass. You know, he's never lost a fight in his life. Where, you know, where did, he, where did he learn how to take care of himself? Yeah, I, I don't know, but... Uh, I don't know if that's true, if he's ever lost a fight in his life, but I, I couldn't believe it. I could see it. Mm. Uh, I'll give you a couple more and close it down. Bruce Pritchard. Uh, mm. Only talked to him one time. Not much dealings with him. Okay. Well, I'm, I might I'm give sure you... he doesn't. <laughs> sure I'll, doesn't I'll give you two more then still. Uh, insane Clown Posse. Uh, they were good friends. Still good friends, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were they uh, some of your regular bookers or were for years? They, they were. 10, 15 years ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, with with the Juggalos, have you ever been more in fear of your life in a crowd? <laughs> no. Uh, when they were throwing stuff, they weren't aiming for me. They are aiming for the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the big... The people, those, those fans, they loved me. They, didn't, they were throwing stuff at me. Yeah, but, I mean, they must have been so drunk. Like, some of their aim must have really been yeah, off. But, uh, when the crowd participates like that, you just soak it in. <laughs> what's, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll end with this uh, what's the hardest thing you've ever been hit by uh, from a fan uh, a full can of beer hit me in the back of the head what, in a glass? or no, in a, in a can, a can of beer Oh, sorry. I it, I it. and I was watching Man Man Pablo was in the ring also and somebody threw a tin can in the ring and it bounced off his head and he sold it, it was an empty can I said, someone hits me with a tin can, I'm not selling it bam, someone, someone hit me with a brick <laughs> you had no choice to sell it yeah, I had to <laughs> 